we have our guest on the line. Uh, we uh, really have worked with Julia Davis, worked with her for a long time. And uh, her story, like I said, is shocking. A former Homeland Security agent uh, married to B.J. Davis, a Hollywood producer. And she was subjected to, in my mind, uh, an unprecedented amount of uh, persecution and harassment by the Department of Homeland Security simply for trying to maintain her fidelity to her duty. Julia Davis, welcome to The Alex Jones Show. Thank you so much. It's my honor to be here. Now, you have been reporting on a number of issues, but you're just not a reporter. You have experienced, been on the front lines, uh, had your life threatened because of information you possessed that was deemed dangerous by the establishment. Why don't you tell the audience how this started? I went into work for the Department of Homeland Security after 9-11, and I was uh, starry-eyed and very naive. I wanted to um, help protect the nation from the terrorist threat. And um, when I tried to do exactly that, um, I've encountered retaliation that I could have never imagined happening in this great country. And I'm sure most patriots, even even those that know of the um, atrocious things that are being done to whistleblowers, would probably be surprised at the kind of retaliation that I've encountered. Shot, shot. I, I mean, it's hard to exaggerate. I was the this. largest and busiest land border crossing in the United States and in the world, San Isidro Port of Entry. And um, we had very specific um, intelligence alerts that um, Al Qaeda was planning to penetrate the land borders of, between the U.S. and Mexico on um, national holidays. And the date of uh, special importance, we were told, would be 4th of July 2004, Independence Day. And on that date, 23 people from special interest countries, which are terrorist countries, have been allowed to enter the United States without being enrolled into any databases that they were supposed to be enrolled in, without uh, their documents being copied, without their fingerprints being taken. Well, uh, they, they just it, walked it across the border? extremely suspicious. And um, mm. when I reported this uh, event to the local port uh, director, he told me to take it to Intel. When I went to Intel, I was surprised to see that on this date of heightened uh, security alert, all Intel workers were given a day off and the office was closed. So I was told to just turn in the paperwork and they would get to it when they get to it. But our manual said that whenever anything that could be remotely related to terrorism was taking place, we were to notify Joint Terrorism Task Force. And that's exactly what I did. And once I made a report to the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force, my life was never the same. I was uh, declared a domestic terrorist. My home was raided with a Black Hawk helicopter and a special response team. Um, right, my husband awesome. and I have been twice falsely arrested and imprisoned and had to fight for years to clear our name and to have um, Department of Homeland Security held accountable for their actions. Yes, and yeah, and they actually launched an unprecedented, a ridiculous number of investigations on you while you were still working for Homeland Security. Is that correct? That's correct. They started with 19 investigations while I was still working for Homeland Security. And then once I was subjected to um, such a retaliation that working there was no longer feasible, they continued to investigate me even after I involuntarily resigned. So um, a total number of investigations um, that we are aware of is 54. 54 investigations against one person, and it's literally for doing your job, for reporting on a uh, unprecedented breach of security where all these uh, you know, people from suspicious countries, when a heightened terror alert wasn't placed dealing specifically with the nature of this breach, when this breach occurred and you reported it, they went after you because you made them look bad. Exactly. And my report about people from terrorist countries entering without uh, requisite procedures being followed was closed the same day with no action and on a no investigation. So I that investigation, that investigation that should have taken place on why 23 um, people from suspected countries would just be able to walk through the border uh, without any kind of background check that was required. They, they closed that after one day, but they for weeks and months conducted 
54 investigations against you, one of their own, for being for, for doing your duty, for trying to report on this. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And it shows you how depraved and where the priorities of Homeland Security are. Now, you mentioned, of course, that they, it actually came down to them raiding your home and um, no exaggeration, landing a helicopter on your front lawn. Why don't you get into that? Yes, uh, after I had um, resigned from Homeland Security, I knew that what was done to me was um, unjust. So I filed a case against Homeland Security in the Equal Employment Opportunities Commission Court. And um, uh, there was a ruling in my favor that said that no reasonable person would have been able to continue working there under such circumstances. And that my resignation was involuntary and was caused by Department of Homeland Security's illegal conduct against me. So two weeks after I won this case against Homeland Security, they land the Black Hawk helicopter. And this is caught on tape. This is, you know, this is caught, literally caught on tape. Exactly. Uh, our neighbor, Matthew Judd, um, saw this was happening and stepped out of his home and started filming the, the raid with his camera. And at what po one point during the raid, he actually realized that the agents have noticed them uh, being filmed. And he said on camera, oh, no, they saw me. And he walked into the house but continued filming through his window. And um, yes, he did uh, videotape the raid uh, where a Black Hawk helicopter had uh, landed by our home and 27 men, um, special response team and, and other agents, uh, 27 Homeland Security agents and one U.S. Marshal. They have surrounded the, ra the residents. They had uh, broken down one door. They had stormed it from all directions. It was a commando style operation. Uh, and, and mind you, you weren't living in Pakistan. They could have driven up to your driveway in a car and knocked on the door and said, hey, I have a warrant and I'm here to search your premises. Can you please have a seat in the living room while we conduct a search? No, they didn't do that because, well, first of all, you and BJ are not dangerous terrorists. You're citizens. BJ served his country as a Marine in Vietnam. Uh, 30 years later, he has his own government landing on his lawn in a Black Hawk helicopter, waving guns around, and they actually may have played a role in your own father's death. Is that correct, Julia? That's correct. And um, they actually didn't even have a search warrant but they stayed in our house for about two hours, close to two hours, searching it without a search warrant. And uh, they they knew before the raid that my dad had a heart condition because they had already pulled up my parents' uh, immigration files because not only did they plan to denaturalize and deport me, but they were already planning to also deport my parents, which were completely innocent victims in all of this. And um, so when they arrived to the house, my dad walked out and, and asked them what is going on here. And he was attacked by several special response team agents with assault weapons who threw him down to the ground with such a force that they broke his finger. They handcuffed him and they dragged him down the a tall set of steps in front of the house. They dragged him away from the house. And uh, this is Palm Springs area. At the heat of the summer, about 114 to 117 degrees, my dad is wearing nothing but his boxer shorts. And uh, when he's asking them what's going on, they tell him, your daughter is a domestic terrorist. So in his mind, he's thinking, if they're doing this, then what is happening to her? Is she being taken to Guantanamo right now? And your father um, was an immigrant from the Ukraine, is that correct? Yes, exactly. He had, he had lived under a communist dictatorship. He came to this country to escape such things. And now we've reached the state of affairs where he's being dragged out of his house in America, in California, in Palm Springs, by the secret police being tossed around and abused because of a political witch hunt. Exactly. And they had no warrant and no right to lay one finger on him, much less to handcuff him and detain him completely illegally and keep him in the full desert sun. And my dad uh, um, was having chest pains. You can imagine anyone with a heart condition being put through this kind of an ordeal would be pretty much guaranteed to have a heart attack. And my dad knew he was having a heart attack. He was telling the um, agents that were 
holding him down. I'm having a heart attack. I need to take my medication. I need to get back into the house. I need water and medicine. I need medical attention. He could see there was an ambulance stationed right across the street that they brought it there for protocol for this raid. But instead of um, letting him have water and medication, which they refused to, they had actually radioed um, the ambulance and told them they were no longer needed and sent them away. We were we obtained the radio logs from the sheriff's department that, that show all this happening. So my dad had an untreated heart attack because of all of this, and uh, he didn't live much longer because of... Um, this kind of uh, brutal mistreatment, and um, the agents knew how close I was to my father. This wasn't negligence. This wasn't incompetence. They knew what they were doing. They knew exactly who they were raiding. They knew who was in the house. They knew their health conditions. They knew their medical conditions. They literally told the uh, ambulance to go away after an elderly man complains of having a heart attack. They, they murdered your father, Julia. I know you know that, but they did. I hope the audience understands that. That Homeland Security, out of a uh, perverse sense of, of, of retribution, decided to murder an elderly man just to satisfy a political agenda. I'm sorry, callers. We're going to be sticking to Julia's story. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Alex Jones here with a very important announcement for Truth Seekers. We've carried a lot of amazing films and books over the years on the online video bookstore at Infowars.com. And out of all the titles we've carried, one stands out because it is just so chillingly convincing. And that's Dreams from My Real Father by Joel Gilbert, available at Infowars.com. This film exposes the fraud that Obama is like nothing I've seen. If you want to know who Obama's real daddy is, this is the film for you. Don't forget, your purchase supports our broadcast and our growing media network. You'll also find at InfoWarsShop.com, None Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen, the book that woke me up. We're also carrying Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey. This book is coffin nails to the globalist takeover. The Greater Good, the most professional and up-to-date film I've ever seen exposing the scourge that is vaccines. These titles and a lot more are all available at InfoWarsShop.com. We are here to present this information. We got Julia Davis on the line. Her documentary, documenting her story, Top Priority, The Enemy Within. This story sounds outrageous, I know. It is outrageous, we know that, but it is on tape, it is documented, and Homeland Security, they mess with the wrong people, because Julia and BJ, they had the will and the determination to clear their name and to fight back. But Julia, we were talking about um, how Homeland Security basically conspired and succeeded in murdering your father, but th those aren't the only people. Uh, you were talking about the witness uh, who filmed the raid on your house, the footage you, which you feature in your documentary, he later died of mysterious circumstances. Is that correct? Yes, the very neighbor who filmed the raid, who realized that the agents noticed him during the filming, he was um, extremely terrified of the situation. And, and uh, when he finally came to me with the tape, he was literally shaking. He said he was very worried about handing it over, but finally decided to do it because it was the, the right thing to do. And he uh, wrote a statement where he also described what he witnessed, described the agents taking boxes out of the house when they didn't even have a search warrant, and they later tried to deny taking things. And um, only weeks after turning the tape over to us, um, the, the neighbor, Matthew Judd, who was only 25 years old, was suddenly found dead in his home. And he was alone and just found on his couch. And years later, there still hadn't been a proper investigation. His death certificate says that the uh, disposition is pending. And there is no coherent explanation as to what exactly happened to this young man. Like I said, this story is documented in the movie that uh, you just premiered in L.A., is that correct? Yes, we started our theatrical release in New York, and then uh, I was followed by Los Angeles, um, and uh, we just um, just finished that portion of the theatrical rollout. 
Exactly, because this is going to the big screens. This is the big boys are going to see this, and this is great because y'all had the connections, y'all had the willpower, you had the means and the tools and the willpower to to make this movie and put it out there for people to see what this government is capable of. Julia, we only have about two minutes. I'm sorry, but we we need to get to another crucial point of your story. Uh, is the death of Brittany Murphy was her death related to your case? It possibly could have been because Brittany was named as a witness in my case. One of the 54 investigations against me included Department of Homeland Security claiming that Brittany Murphy told them that I was working on a film with my husband during the same time when I was working for Homeland Security. And uh, Brittany confirmed that that was a lie, that she never made such a statement. And as soon as um, she refuted Homeland Security's uh, allegations her life became a living nightmare and she reported this to the hollywood press that she was being followed that helicopters were following her and they mocked her and yeah. then then she died under very mysterious circumstances a, a healthy young actress god knows uh, hollywood stars have a, a very low shelf life but she was not involved in in the lifestyle that would that would attribute to that and she winds up dead and so does her husband Yes, because she reported to the Hollywood Reporter, which printed a story called The Less Difficult Days of Brittany Murphy. She had told Alex Van Block of the Hollywood Reporter that she was being followed by hel helicopters and this wiretap. And she was uh, made fun of and called paranoid uh, or being on drugs and was had lost um, jobs because of that. And, and uh, her career had uh, spiraled out of control. The Homeland Security tried to deport her husband just the way they tried to deport me. And uh, there are a lot of similarities. The same office of ICE, also from San Diego. Immigration that, Customs Enforcement. Exactly. Immigration Customs Enforcement. And they had also were planning to bring marriage fraud charges against Brittany and Simon that we recently found that out through FOIA requests. Uh, so the the similarities are endless. So even after they tried to deport her husband, that wasn't over yet. The Homeland Security was still planning to bring more. Cars. Julia, this story is outrageous, and pe people need to see it. Where are they? Key? Where can they check out your documentary? Uh, please visit topprioritymovie.com. That's our official website. That's topprioritymovie.com, and we'll be posting more information there as we continue to um, premiere the film across the country. We'll be right back after this. Thank you, Julia.